simple experiment. I filled this glass up with ice, and I filled in the spaces with water all the way up to the top of the rim. Notice that the ice is over the top of the rim. Ask yourself these questions. What will happen when the ice melts? Will the glass overflow? Why or why not? And what are some real life applications of this experiment? Pause the video now and record your hypothesis. melts, and then we'll come back and we'll observe the results. We're back again and all the ice is melted. As you can see, the glass didn't overflow even though the ice was over the top of the rim. You may say to yourself, well, maybe some of the water evaporated, but at room temperature, some may evaporate, but not a significant amount to account for this phenomenon. Well, why did it happen? Come into my classroom and we'll talk about it. Does this shape look familiar to anyone? Probably not, but this is a Lewis dot structure. It's got an oxygen and two hydrogens. Does it sound familiar yet? That is H2O or water. A Lewis dot structure basically shows the arrangement of electrons around a molecule. And notice, these two dots are electrons, and this is a bond. Basically, it means that these two elements are sharing their electrons with each other. But that part's not important. You don't have to remember that. But what is important is that because there are more electrons over here on this side than here, this side is more negative than this side. And that gives water very special properties. This is a representation of what, how molecules look, how molecules of water look on a molecular level. Now, just to give you an idea, um, in one tiny drop of water, there are 1.67 times 10 to the 21st power water molecules. So, one of these. And that's what it looks like written out in standard form. I'm not going to try to pronounce that number. <laughs> but in ice, when an ice cube freezes, the water molecules line up so that the positive ends, the hydrogens, um, are kind of interacting with the negative ends of another mo water molecule. So that makes these water molecules spread out more than they do when they're in their liquid form. This is a representation of what water looks like in, it, in the liquid form. Now, the negative ends of one molecule are going to still be attracted to the positive ends of another molecule, um, but because there's more energy in the system, because um, uh, the water molecules are more free to move, um, they're not spread out as much. They're kind of flowing over each other. They're in constantly in motion. Um, so, there are more water molecules in one area in, in the liquid water than in ice. That makes water in the liquid form more dense than ice. The density of water, as we will discuss in Unit 1, is just one gram per milliliter. When it's frozen, it's more spread out. So there are less wa um, water molecules in the same amount of space. The density of ice is about 0.92 grams per milliliter. So when the ice melts, the, it's taking up this uh, much space, and then it shrinks in a little bit. So it's taking up less space. It's d displacing less water. So <clears throat> even though the ice was over the rim of the glass, the ice kind of shrunk in. It became more dense. So 
the glass didn't overflow. That, the density of ice versus the density of water explains why ice cubes float. This is actually a special quality um, that not a lot of other molecules have. And it's important to our life on Earth. If water didn't have this property of polarity and hydrogen bonding, we wouldn't be alive. Um, so the important ideas to take home in this lesson are polarity, and density. And the density formula again is density is equal to mass divided by volume, which is usually, the mass is usually going to be given in grams, and the volume is going to be given in milliliters. <clears throat> um, in terms of polarity, we only talked about a polar molecule. There are also nonpolar molecules and then varying degrees of polarity in between those two. Here's an example of a nonpolar molecule. Anyone recognize this? It's carbon dioxide. It's what we breathe out and the plants breathe in. It may look like the end of this, the ends of this molecule are negative and the center is positive. But because the negative is on either side, the negative the negative charges are pulling an equal amount and the negatives cancel each other out. So that's why this particle is nonpolar. an important concept in our chromatography lab we're going to do next week. The lab doesn't talk about it, but it's actually the main one of the main reasons that chromatography works. So just keep this in mind as you're doing the experiment. If you have any questions, please post them to the raise your hand section on the unit one page.